Hey guys, it's me, Dr. Jennifer Otter Bickerdyke, and welcome to this ITMI podcast. We are at the Walrus in Brighton, <laughs> and I have to say, it has my favorite combination of items. There's chandeliers, there's taxidermy. I'm here with Orchards, with Lucy and Sam from Orchards. Taxidermy, yay or nay? Sam, starting with you. I'm vegan, so I don't really. No, not it's not really. your jam. I went straight there. Straight really? There with the veganism. Just, just drop it in. We are in Brighton, so we yeah, are right. here. Yeah. What about you? Do yeah, you I don't them? know. I mean, give them an. If they're already dead. Exactly. Let's give them a new. Yes, yeah, I suppose. Yes. I suppose. As long as it's tasteful and they're not like dressed as a clown. Probably or actually the worst <laughs> are better for me. If really, it's like a cross eyed leopard. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty. <laughs> Down so we're here at the wall, the walrus, and I've been trying to get you guys on the podcast for a long ass time. So let's just start with some kind of ease you guys into the questiones. What made you decide I want to be in a band, pursue this path? Do you want to go first? I think yeah, I think our journeys are very different. They're really so, different because I was so musical theatre. The last part I had before I left home to move to Brighton was Maria and West Side Story. Oh my god. So I was like top C, like could hit really, really high notes. And then moved to Brighton and learnt what clubbing was and what drinking was and was like, oh so I can't sing this high anymore. Great. The top C is gone. <laughs> like that's totally gone. And I was like, okay, so I need to I literally only chose like BIM over like like Rada or Lambda or something like that because I didn't want to be like one of those snotty people with my leg up against a wall going look how far I can stretch and look how bendy I, like, I didn't want to do any of that I was like I just want to be on a stage that's all I want I just want to be on a stage so I came to BIM and to start with I was in a funk band really for, for, for two years maybe and we were quite good we were a good funk band um but I think all of us realized that that wasn't really what we wanted to do and uh I had been Orchard's photographer for three years previously while they had oh. a different vocalist. Um, was she, that a girl t- as well? Yeah. She decided she didn't want to do music anymore, which is fair enough. She doesn't. Um, she now has a lovely baby. Uh, so she decided she didn't want to do music anymore and they were like, right, well, we need to find a vocalist. And I was like, well, I'll audition if you find, like, uh, like audition as many people and I'll still audition because I'd really like to do it. Because I had been their like 101 biggest fan for like three years. Um, because I'd been their photographer for so long, I've been to all of their shows, so I knew all the words. And uh, I'd always really liked what like the music that they started writing. And when I you asked me, I had my taste in music was not very <coughs> varied, was it? And then you sort of showed me like bands like Tangled Hair, mm. and I think that's where a lot of Orchards influence coming from i suppose it used to definitely yeah so so lucy as you're you were just saying before like you have nine aunts and uncles a very large family when you said i want to be a singer were they just like omg like you what, like what was the what was the response i think i'm an only child are you um, and my parents are two of the most supportive people you could ever meet in your life they will do anything for you and they are incredible humans um and i had always been interested in like musical theater and dance and music and like drama or whatever and i think they always knew i was going to do something like that i think they they probably worked it out a long t- a long time before they i had school grades and was like that's vet out the window <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's physician like, well, she's out not the gonna window. be a scientist <laughs> is she topsy though <laughs> yeah so i think i think they'd they'd known for a long time that's what i was going to do because that's what i did all the time like i did four drama classes outside of school like it's the only thing that I did and I was like so I'm I'm gonna move to Brighton and I'm gonna do music my dad I think was secretly over the moon over the moon just like this is brilliant this is what I I think he's wanted to do that forever but he cannot play an instrument save his life and my mum was like right okay okay you can do this this is good we can do this like my mum's really rational and then my dad got really overexcited but they're two of the most supportive people in the world and every time I go home and see my family they're like yeah we're not surprised you're doing all of these things. Like, we knew oh. you would do this. I think I've always been that kind of person. Like, I am quite introverted, but when I talk about things or do things that I'm excited or passionate about, I then am, I'm not introverted at mm. all, and I'm really overexcited. But I think they always knew I was going to do that. So I think I always knew that deep down. But I was like, no, I'm going to be a primary school teacher. Was I? No. Of no, it's not that. 
that's the that's like the way back at plan like when you're 60 yeah. and you're like maybe i'll do that for fun okay yeah. so what about you what about you sir what was your what, what was your did you have an epiphany moment when you were like aha i want to yeah. do this it was yeah i went to see the red hot chili peppers in the men it was i think it's called the evening news arena now it's like manchester arena basically mm. um and yeah i just left there and it was the first massive gig i'd ever been to like i'd been to see the zootons in like a small club in liverpool and that and i was boss but then when i saw them i remember just walking out and being like to my dad oh I like i want to play guitar and then they bought me an acoustic and i was like Phew. i was like this does not sound like what i needed to sound like so i went to electric and um yeah it all just kind of went like dripping in like bands started to come into my like periphery from all these different people that i'd meet and then um i've been playing guitar since i was maybe like 14 i think essentially um <coughs> started like tried to do lessons in school and i just never went to them i'd lie and be like i just hated it i hate the way he was trying to teach me the friends theme song on guitar oh, and i was just no like wonder. come find my guitar in the guitar room and he mm. i'd come in like 10 minutes to go like sorry man uh, can i borrow yours no oh, God, i gotta go back now i just hate it but then yeah, I met all the people that I got introduced to like bands like the Mars Volta and stuff. Um and then like I had like Foles and everything, everything like obviously later on, Bombay Bicycle Club. Yeah. I love all those bands. Yeah, that's like my sort of Everything stuff. everything is, is like a huge orchard of Yeah. Us, I think. Oh Massive. do they know that? I, well, I treat I'm, them like so. ba- like monthly I'd say, just being <laughs> yeah. like, just letting you know we love you, we're still, still here. You, we love Let's you. we can we'll leave Jeremy a message before we go today. Oh, I'm gonna <gasps> um, I'm gonna tweet them for our Manchester show. Hell yeah, yeah again. Like, please come see us. The smartest. We did a podcast with Jeremy, and like, so smart, so smart, so mm-hmm. nice, so like, I'm like, thank God you exist in the world. Like, yeah. one of those kind of people. Well, that's why I imagine someone who's going to leave it a little bit better. Yeah, he's such a good egg. I love that guy. But yeah, just doing all that. And then um, I used to be in a, a band in Liverpool, and then I was in a, a sludge metal band. Me and Daniel are bass player. Sludge metal? We're in a sludge metal band, yeah. Um, but incidentally, the day I met them two, was the day that their <coughs> old band was being played on Radio 1 for the first oh, time. Oh, wow. And we went to a bar, and there was nobody in the bar apart from us. And they it's were like, can like we put... Fun now. I know. Can we put Radio 1 on? And I was like, why? And someone was like, oh, my band being played on Radio 1. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And it played, and I was like, oh, my God, I know this song. I know this song. This is really strange. So I knew their old sludge metal band. It's not like we then. were that big, though. I no, but I was just aware of them. Yeah, I just liked sludge metal. Apparently. But yeah, then that crossover with Orchard's a bit, and then we did this. So I, I want to talk about what you guys have coming up, but I have one last question before we get there, and that is, I mean, I'm just saying for myself, like, every day someone's like, I want to write a book, I want to be a writer, and it's just like, at the same time, there's all this pressure because it's something, like, nobody says they want to be a, a trash picker-upper, you mm. know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. how do you kind of, what am I trying to say? I, I guess I'm not really phrasing this the right way. It's hard because how do you continue to pursue something that, one, 10 bajillion people want to do mm. and two it's like let's just call a spade a spade the cheddar is not there until you yeah. hit unless you're jk rowling in my case yeah, yeah so how do you continue like what what makes you keep going and the, like the thing for us i was just well I, we've always kind of done it as a band haven't we and it was just like um we've always written music that we liked we've mm. never we've never tra- i had like simon neil from biffy clara said it. he was like we've been a band for years and we've got they had like three albums i think that were like crazy math rocky screaming all over the show and then they released puzzle and then they're doing like huge yeah. things similar with kings of leon they were kind of quirky yeah. like bluesy band and then sex is on fire yeah stadiums and it was like but it's still them and it's still biffy Clyde. people might say oh no it's not still them but it is it still is them and they're writing that mm-hmm. so just write don't follow a trend like i've seen so many bands try and do this whole 80s revival thing as soon as 1975 did it it seems like Brighton just went with these 1975 cover bands and now they're, I don't even know what their names it's are. It's just write music that you enjoy listening yeah. to. Write music that you would go home and you would put on. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't ever listen back to our tracks because I hate listening to myself sing. But it's that point. It's like, go home and... Like, this morning, when we were walking into town, you were, like, singing this, what we were writing yesterday. Mm. And I was like, that's it. If we, if I can wake up in the morning and the melody I wrote yesterday is in my head, then it's a good melody and I'm going to write it. But I think you're, I totally agree with you. Like, write music that you want to write and hopefully one day it will pay dividends. Liam Gallagher, I got one of them from as well. Liam Gallagher was just like, they were like, do you think, who do you think is the best band in the world at the moment? And he was like, 
uh, so Oasis in it he was like and they were like really your own band and he was just like well if you don't think yeah. you're the best how do you expect like you and you and you to think we're the best especially as a British person like you're not supposed to say that you well know yeah I mean? unfortunately the way the music oh unfortunately however you look at it the way the music industry goes people are less and less honest yes. in their lyrics and that really frustrates me and I think that's something that I've try really hard to do like we were writing yesterday and we like started writing one song and then they like f- the boys like flitted on to work into another one and I was like no I need to be in headspace because mm-hmm. I've got I, I refuse to write a lyric that isn't honest I refuse to write a lyric that isn't like something I've experienced because then if, if it's not something I've experienced how can somebody relate to it mm. like everybody everyone in the world can relate to a fleet of Mac song Everybody's so had their heart broken. Yeah. Like everybody's experienced unrequited love. Like everyone's experienced those things. So it that's I think that's why that album will always last because it's just so honest. But just back to the songwriting process for a second there. I mean, is it terrifying for you, Lucy, being especially being I hate to say especially being a woman, but I think that you just are putting yourself out there in a different kind of way. Is it scary to be so, I hate to say, honest with your lyrics? Because this is you you're talking about. Yeah, it totally is. I think, I I get, we played a show in London that we were talking about earlier, the one at Paper Dress. It was a really incredible show. And at the end of it, uh, a guy pulled me over to the side and was like, can I, I like, I'm feeling quite emotional today. Can I have a conversation with you? And not being snotty, but I think most people will probably have been like, no, like, like, it's my like headline show like I'm too busy no and I was like no of course like went outside of the venue and sat with this guy for like 25 30 minutes would you say and like had this conversation about his like mental health and how he was feeling and he was he was feeling really like insecure and upset that day and was like but I thought you know I'm gonna come to this show because you're always really like like (coughs) warm and like nice and I was like well yeah if you feel like crap, mate, have a conversation with me. Like, everybody feels rubbish. And we just released a song that is the only, first and only song I've ever written about mental health because I struggled quite a lot with it and I find it quite hard to write about. So when I do write about it, it's quite like a, a big moment for me. And I was like, well, you do something that gets this emotion out of you. For me, it's writing lyrics for someone else it might be painting a wall like it could literally be anything but whatever whatever emotion or like feeling you've got find a way of expelling that in a healthy way not turn into things like substances or alcohol like find a way of getting it out of you i write poetry that's how i express my emotion no one ever and probably no one's ever going to read it but i write it and it's out on a piece of paper and if I don't want to think about that emotion again, I rip it up, put that piece of paper in the bin. Like, find a way of doing that. And I just sat with this guy for, like, half an hour just saying all of these things to him. And he was like, I'm really glad I came today. Like, I wasn't going to come to your show. But, like, I feel a lot better. And I was like, yeah, if if I can literally help one person, I'm done. I've done my job. Like, I've, I've done a, my job. It's a lot of pressure on you, though, at the same time. Yeah, You know, to always be, like, me, have the, per, per, the persona. And as you get bigger and bigger, mm. there's going to be more of a pressure on you to be, like, that persona. Are you going to jump in here, Sam? I think you're... No, I just... Yeah. No, I just... I. What do you think about I agree. Yeah. I just feel like there's a lot of pressure on any, any person in any sort of, like, limelight mm. to be something that's going to um, benefit the world and not someone that's going to be, like like teaching kids because a lot of people who come to our shows now are kids like yeah. i now feel like oh god am i getting older <laughs> but um we having a, is it whitney houston yeah <laughs> <laughs> let them lead the way yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> teach you the <laughs> i watched this, i watched this documentary about like a rock climber and he was just like if i can leave the world a better place than when i was than when i came into it that's cool and i think like yeah. Doing it sounds so cheesy and like cliche, doesn't it? But like that, doing that. But I think music. a lot of people say it but don't actually mean it. But I think the difference is, especially us four, and I think a lot of people that we do work with actually believe that. Like, I, if I can make one person smile today, I've done a good job. Mm. I interviewed this woman, Cozy Fanny 2D, the other day. She was in a band called Throbbing Gristle super amazing absolute worshiper but she said that a lot of times because she's very much like experimental music and kind of an arts for art's sake kind of vibe but she mm. says like the butterfly effect like you just don't which is to, yeah. again cheesy 
But I think if you go into it going, I'm going to be the best person I can be, and then whatever happens from totally, that. Totally, you know? that's what I was going to say. Like, just from knowing, like, my mates having, you know, issues with mental health and, and seeing how, like, one person who, who literally might not have even thought anything of it saying one thing to them and then just carrying on with their day that affects that person's whole day mm. and it ruins their whole day and, and i ruins their whole day well so say we like we're in another i guess they do you can make their to... day or ruin their day well yeah, yeah. like one mm. one person just saying one thing to say my friend can ruin my friend's day and it, yeah it can make their day like you say but i, I always think that the other way maybe being a bit of a person i was, I was, I was just like i always try and just be nice be nice yeah it's it's so easy to be nice to people which yeah. is why it infuriates me when people are not nice and i, I probably sound like i'm being really no, you big headed really and conceited that, yeah, yeah. yeah but <laughs> i just it it frustrates me so much like we were in a, it's so ridiculous we were in a coffee shop the other day and the uh barista walked over to this guy and was like can i get you another coffee do you need anything else and he looked he might as well have just looked straight through her and just went no as if to say, like, why else? Would... You're in a coffee shop, mate. Do you want another coffee or not? Like, she's asking you if you want something else and you haven't got to get out of your seat. Like, be nice to her. And that, like, I was furious the whole day, wasn't I? I was like, this is so unfair. This is, like, really mean. Because, not to sound rude, but if she, she was a man, he probably wouldn't have acted like that. Mm -hmm. And y you could just see it, like, because... There's also a class thing going there, yeah. though, I'm thinking, too. He was just you know. so rude to her, and I, I know her. She sells me coffee every single day, and she's an absolute wonderful human. And he just looked straight through her, and she just carried on, didn't even face her. But me, I was, like, <laughs> internally screaming for, like, hours, being like, this is ridiculous. That's, like, the little things that make the difference. But then, then you, you ramp it up to a stage where, like, someone's come to our show and specifically asked to speak to you mm. or asked to speak to, to me or Daniel and Will. I think, because I struggle with this a lot i think well i'm like we're working really really hard and like i just feel like like no one cares and we got a message an email the other day that was like i just want you guys to know that what you do really means a lot to people don't stop doing it that was the email and i was like the pair of us were like oh my god this is incredible and like that that one two sentence email meant more than the last three months like it's things like that. It's knowing that somebody appreciates what you're that doing. That goes back to that point that that person was like, I wasn't going to send this email. Yeah. They were like, I'm so glad I did. And I thought, there's something flipped on me there. They've gone, I'm going to do this nice thing and tell these people how much they, their music means to me. And that made my day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it's it, so easy to do, like you were saying at the beginning of our conversation. Nice. Yeah, it's so huge. And people, I have to tell you, that will go a long way for you guys in the industry. Like bands I've worked with that are nice, 20 years later, I'm still like, that person's really nice. If they're a cock, mm -hmm. Oh, Chad, I'll tell you off camera who the cock is. Well, you know we, I mean? yeah, yeah, we've had people who work in the music industry, like, go to us, huh, this band, mm. they're renowned by, for being, like, one of the worst bands to work with in the music industry, and it's like, ooh. It's like, I never, I never, ever <laughs> yeah. want to be that. I want yeah. it. I want someone to be like, oh, yeah, well, Book Orchards, you know what? They're really nice they're people. They're super nice. Yeah. Mm. I think a lot of people, especially in the music industry, do preach about being, like, inclusive mm. and, like... And everyone should be, but I think it doesn't always, unfortunately, whether people meet, uh, are doing it purposefully or maliciously or whatever, I don't think it always actually comes from a place of honesty. Mm -hmm. Like, you can be inclusive. Like, there's a night that is run in Brighton called Femrock, and it's a brilliant night, and it was one of the first gigs I ever played, and we played it every year we for, do like, every six Christmas years. Party, we played we? every single Christmas party. And we play it because it's a night, it's a safe space. And I think a lot of people, not Femrock, because Femrock do it as a safe space, but a lot of people hook onto that and being like, we're a night for women and it's a safe space. And it's like, hold on, I don't want to stage dive at this venue or at this gig. I'm not comfortable. Every single show we play, I'm like, I want to stage dive. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I want to do it so bad, but I don't feel comfortable enough everywhere we go the Femrock to be the... able to do it. Yeah, it was the first place that... When I moved from Liverpool here, which was probably like seven years ago now, maybe. Yeah. Like, it opened my eyes. I was like, wow, there's like... Because Liverpool at the time wasn't very inclusive, I don't think. 
it's amazing now. And now Femra, I was like, you know, they've got a, they've got a place in Femrock where like whatever venue they're in, you know, there's a, always make sure there's a quiet zone if anyone's getting too overwhelmed and stuff. And it's like it's the little thing and gender neutral toilets as well, which are great. I think that, that's yeah, just an awesome thing to do. But like that little safe zone that I saw, I was just like, that's so good because venues. I, even I get it on tour sometimes. I'll get like hella anxious if it's like a packed venue and I know I've got a play and I know maybe people are like. You just want to looking. escape. You just yeah, want to like hide some, for a you bit. Know, just to have that little safe zone. For us, it's like the green room. You know, we're lucky enough that we can get away, but they've created this little safe zone. And I just think it's boss. I think everyone does preach about being inclusive and, and like want to help each other, but no one actually follows through with that. I went to an event in November that was like celebrating women in the music industry, and I'm like. I fucking hate these events because why are we still talking about this? Like when I was 19 and first starting out, which was, you know, almost 30 years ago, we were talking about this. We're still talking about this because I, I find that coming from the Bay Area in San Francisco, a lot of my friends are so liberal that they're just mm. bastards now. It's like they're a joke, you know? Well, I, yeah, I, I do think there's there's a line. I'm not going to mention any names. There's I'm not going to go into it too much. But there's a line that I've found where people are liberal for the sake of it being their image. Yeah. Like, I think you don't have to talk about it. If you see something and you think, you know, that's not cool, say something if you want to, but you don't need to make it your image. Mm. Well, like, it's, it's we, we were talking about it the other day, weren't we? Because I, I saw on Instagram there's a really cool coffee shop in... God, I sound like I literally live in coffee shops, but I do. I was going to say. Literally, it's, I live in them. Um, talking about. <laughs> there's a place in Liverpool called Bold Street and they had a Galentine's Day event, which I thought was a really cool idea. And I was like... I don't know of anything in Brighton that's like that. Why is there not an event like that? And I was like, but hold on, there shouldn't have to be an event like that. And I was like, I did an interview with a magazine called Lady Fuzz, which is a really cool magazine run by uh, Lucinda, who lives in Brighton. She's a wicked, wicked Kamikaze person. Kamikaze girls. Yeah, she's a band called Kamikaze girl. She's really cool. Um, and I did an interview with them, and I was like, we need to stop seeing this, like, lack of women in the industry or lack of women in whatever industry doesn't necessarily have to mean music we need to stop seeing it as a lack of or a negative thing and start seeing it as a vacancy like as a space that we can fill yeah, like yeah. like i don't want to be booked because i'm a girl i want to be booked because our music is amazing like i want to be i want to be in a situation because i people want me there not mm. because of i wear a bra and pants do you know what i mean like but that's the quandary because yeah, like I like so I hard. want you because you know because I I want you to be there just for other especially younger girls to see and so you're in this kind of thing it's like it's like a catch twenty two it's a catch twenty two yeah. like what do you do but I Sam I like what you said because it's it's about the way you walk through the world that mm. is your I'd say political statement but the way that you are that's the identity just yeah. you know what I mean like I mean Brighton maybe people say makes you too liberal and makes you like a soft. Like you're all soft when you live in Brighton, but it's soft just like, know. yeah, like soft. Like, like I don't, I don't count how many get. Like I wouldn't even say gay. Yeah, you know, they can be whatever they want. You don't I've think got, about it. Yeah, I don't think it's about what their sexuality is, and just like they are them. Yeah, and I'm, whatever they want to do is cool, and I'm like fine with that. But then when you go back, like when I used to go back to Liverpool, Liverpool's got like incredible now. It's it's really good. It's when you used to go back, space I'd walk around and I'd be like. No one here. I'm looking at people in bars and I'm like, you don't want to be that person. I'm like, I mean, I don't know. They might be. But I'm just thinking, you're afraid to be who you are because Liverpool isn't accepting just yet. And now I'm going back and there's more people dressing mental. And there's more people dressing exactly how they want to dress. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, this yeah. is sick. It's, it's brilliant. It is, it's, I think that it's the thing that I loved about Brighton when I first moved here. Mm. That it is so... Where are, you from? Where are you from, Lucy? I'm from Dagenham, which is not the greatest place in the oh world. Oh my god, Dagenham D. It's a Morrissey <laughs> song. So sorry. I, <laughs> no, I'm from a place called Dagenham, which is on the outskirts of London. It's in Essex, and it's it's not a liberal place. It's not a, a open minded place. It's not anything. And I moved to Brighton this really, literally only knowing of bands pre seventies. Moved to Brighton, this like terrified little musical theatre kid and met Sam and our bassist Daniel on the first day I moved here. Really? I was like, oh my God, like this is what... My community. This is great, this yeah. is where I'm meant to be. There's other people who 
like your stuff it's not all like yeah because i suppose dagenham is this big as well oh my god it? you know, yeah it's, it's tiny and it's sheltered yeah i can't because I, mean, I came from a place called santa cruz where like we're known for having lesbian yeah, mayors and marijuana being legal since yeah. the like early 80s so you know for me it's like well, even, 101 even, how i mean that's that's really bold of you guys to break yeah. out and move down here seriously yeah. well, liverpool's not liverpool's nowhere near liverpool's near amazing as bad now. As i love dagenham. liverpool oh, yeah, me yeah. Too. yeah yeah but i just mean like you like that's saying as bad as dagenham sorry but that's no. like this big whereas like liverpool's this big so you will inevitably find like a bit of diversity in a city that large especially liverpool so one thing that we were talking about about being in brighton is I mean, one thing is did, did BIM have any effect do you think or helped in your success yeah I, like I said I went to a music college before BIM as well and it's the same that goes for there same goes for BIM but I was at BIM for three years so it's a bit different like you only get out what you put in like so true. I, I started BIM with somebody and they quit in like the first year because they weren't getting I think the credit they thought they deserved and I was just like you know you you the need harder to work you work, this. the harder other people work for you. It's so true. And That's life, that's though, really, isn't it? Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think I'm glad that Bim was like that because it made me prepared. Mm-hmm. I was prepared to be overwhelmed. <clears throat> when like I like a network for three yeah. years. Oh my god! Yeah. And now, you know. You, I, you, this, you have a framework and the skills to go in because you seem very confident, Sam. Yeah. You seem very posed and like. Yeah. Men on the scene. Wow, yeah, yeah. Was it was it the independent venue scene that also appealed to you guys coming down here? Yeah, well I Liverpool was was always great for that sort of stuff. And then like Brighton, I knew some bands from Brighton and I like knew that it was a cool like hub for music. And then when I got down here and you have places like the Hope and Ruin and like sticky mics and stuff. That was like you can go see bands play any night of the week if you know a fiver. Maybe a little bit less if you know the door person. And like, I think that's really good. But then it's also great because if you think now I was in the position of the bands I was watching, like you play your, you play your like, your, what, what's it? Like the Beatles went to Germany to basically like find their feet and like mm. play all their like kind of rubbish. Not saying the Beatles are rubbish, but you know what I mean? Like you find your feet rubbish. there, like you do that. You can make in, mistakes. Yeah, you can make mistakes like play, play in places like the home. We did that. that, like we... Every Christmas we end up doing the same show, that Femrock show. And every Christmas we just try and play like a couple of new songs just to see how they sell. And like, I think playing those, that's like our little like, temperature gauge mm. type thing. Like, do these songs work? Okay, we can do these ones. I think Brighton's very good for that. Audiences are very honest. If they don't like it, mm. they're not going to clap. So I, th- Ooh, and I quite brutal. appreciate that. Yeah. Like, whereas if you go to... Like Cardiff is one of my favorite places to play because they just they just want you to be there and they have so much fun and you just mm. really enjoy it. Whereas Brighton is very very honest. The audience. But then on, are. The, on the flip side, like like the venue closes. Do you want like? I just say what's going on. Yeah, what, we can't talk about sticky mics. I know you mentioned sticky mics. It made me sad. So like, sticky mics is closed, which we played some probably like that with the Hope and Ruin, the place we played the most in Brighton. Yeah. And like I say, like, you know, I don't think we'd be the band we are and have, like, the sort of connection that we have with each other on stage and stage presence-wise and everything. We cut our teeth in, like, sticky mics. And it's, like, it's... Like, and eat, what was it called? The Blind Tiger. Blind Tiger. Blind yeah. Tiger is what Brewdog is now in Brighton. And, you know, you see similar things. Like, bands play there, like, their fair shows sometimes. And now places like that have gone. You know, bands aren't gonna just go straight from BIM in a practice room and go and play Concord 2, mm. unless it's an entertainment gig. But, you know, they're <laughs> not gonna like headline Concord 2 straight away. It's just not gonna happen. And if they do, they're not gonna be ready. So, like. You have... need independent venues because they, they give you that stepping stone, they give you that middle ground to go, right, well, I know what I enjoy doing. And I know that I have the technical skills to play on stage, but now I've got to put the fun bit and the technical bit into the same into the same performance. Mm-hmm. And that's how you learn that. Like the first gig I ever played in Brighton was at the Prince Albert, which apparently has changed now. I, I don't know what it looks like now. <laughs> um, but it was the first gig I ever played in the Prince Albert. And I'd, I'd done musical theatre for 12 years. I'd never, I'd never been on like an independent venue stage before, and I was just got on and started singing. I was like, "Yeah, 
all my mates are watching me, I'm on stage with my mates, like I'm having a great time, and it teaches you how to perform. Like, had had it not been for independent venues in any city, but obviously we're in Brighton and there's a, there's quite a few of them, if it wasn't for the independent venues, you wouldn't learn. You don't learn. To perform, you can't teach somebody how to perform. Mm. They've just got to mm. learn it themselves. Yeah, yeah. You can do you can do classes on it. Hairbrush and mirror only goes so far. Oh my god, yeah. You know definitely. what I mean? Like you need to you need to like we just I'm just gonna use an example that happened to me. Like we were playing a, a like an industry event in London mm. in Camden like a few months ago, and you know it's all people from festivals, and you're basically like and everyone's our there agent. with their lanyards. Yes. It's the same yeah. sort of deal. Like our agent put us forward as like our whole booking agent we were one of three bands who was representing them you know it's a big deal because like you know you like your booking agent you want to perform and all that we could just see her in the there's a diversion we could just see her in the crowd and all of us were like do this for Liv just like (laughs) (laughs) yeah like my wire popped out and I think it could if I hadn't been playing in bands for years and like playing the venues like the Hope Maroon and in in Liverpool, this, band, uh, this place like the Zanzibar and stuff, and we had a bar fly in Liverpool. But um, yeah, and, you know, I just fall to the floor, get back in, and I didn't really flap because it was I've a split done. Second, I've like, done these none things. of us three barely even noticed. But if, if you like, we have... sort of looked at each other like something doesn't sound right, and then it sounded right again, and you were like, "Oh, carry on." Yeah, but that's just just plugging it back in. But what yeah. I mean is like. If I hadn't have done all these shows in the independent venues where I've jumped off stuff, landed straight on my pedal board, fell over, and I had to be like, oh my God, I'm embarrassed. But you know, you're doing it in a small venue, teammates. I'm not doing it. I won't do it. Touch wood. I will not do it at like Concord. I'll know that when I jump off, I'm not, I'm going to jump off something, let's be real. But <laughs> I'm not going to jump on my pedal board because I know where it is. I've done all that sort of stuff. It is. It's cutting your teeth. It's I'll, exactly what it is. I, I, they're sorry. they're st- but independent venues and small venues are so important to the growth of a band. Mm. Not even a band, to the growth of any musician or performer. I was so say, important. It's also the networking thing. Like, it's also the music community it around is. it. Yeah. Like, no, you can go to fans, Concord. You know. Yeah, you can go to Concord. And yeah, you can stand by your merch, but people will have a merch person probably. But now you go to Hope and Ruin and you off the stage and you're basically two steps and you're at your merch desk and you're going to be doing your own merch and you're going to meet everyone. But also you're going to go to the bar there and you're going to talk to people in the mm. other bands and it's not just like, here's your dressing room, here's your dressing room. No one speaks to each other really un- until, you know, if you're lucky, you do speak to them. People are nice. Especially, especially at festivals. Like you, you exactly, know. you get like a port cabin yeah. where everyone's there. Yeah. And like, but yeah, independent venues, it's just every... I, th- I feel like the music industry is based and built upon independent it's venues. It's the foundation. Now, if you've not got a strong enough... I always say this, in music as a whole, if you... Are, if you don't have a foundation if you get a band that starts here gets picked up straight to here there's nothing in between look how far you've got to fall but if you if you take that journey and you immediately build a new foundation the whole way up you've got nowhere to fall and independent venues are the start of that foundation you've got to cut your teeth in a venue that you feel comfortable in because you do always feel comfortable in independent venues <laughs> because it's a pub that you probably go in three nights a week. Well, it's like I, I can c- recall a couple of kids who come to our shows and they've been coming to see us in the Hope and Ruin back in the day and mm. now I see them at the front. Like, we played Truck Festival. It was so and I nice, see yeah. this, this these couple of kids at the front and some of them d- don't even know each one. They don't know each other. Like Well, they do now, but they, they didn't. They, 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 they don't know. <laughs> Well, it's just like I've, I've seen you in the hope when we've been playing to like hardly anyone, and now you're in, thankfully, a packed out tent, and you're right at the front, and it's like you know they're there because we've had the chance to speak to them afterwards. It's not just they're invested like, in you. Yeah. Well, you yeah. Know, that's that's a huge thing. I mean, like when when pre-internet, that was like you when you were talking about Dagenham, for example. It's like you're the other goth in town. You're yeah. the other you're the other weirdo in town. Yeah. And so that totally. would be like your little community. Or if you liked a band that nobody else liked, that was like if you just take the band even out of it, that was like your set of values and and ethos. But also if you just you talking to someone for like five minutes or taking a picture with them, that to them, going back to the very beginning, yeah. that means everything to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that fan will be with you. When you're talking about those foundations, Lucy, they'll yeah. be with you forever. You know what I mean? Totally. And they're so it's so important. It's not even for them as lovely as it is for them it's really nice for us because mm. like we got on stage at truck and i was like oh there's sam like yeah. i knew and he was there and i was like okay i feel like Ready someone's there that i know and i know he's gonna have a good time and i'll play the show because he's there like and it just 
it makes you feel better. Well, it's just thankful that you see it grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So bands might be listening to this, and you know they they might be fair she bim and they're playing the Hope and Ruin to like the ten people we've played it to, and you think like, oh, it's so like, why am I doing it? And it's like to keep going because if you if you're playing and you're believing in what you're doing and you're good at it and you can play hopefully things will get and that's the thing we're but we're by no means at the top of any game yet but we're i think we're far far enough on in our careers that we can appreciate where we've come from Mm. like i really appreciate the green door store and sticky mics and the blind tiger and the hope and ruin like i appreciate those venues so much now like our the first uh venue we ever played in cardiff got closed down last week yeah Yeah. And I was like, but that was our first ever show in Cardiff, That's and why it was incredible. We, put, we don't put Cardiff on our tour in like regime because it's like a city you have to go to. We we go there because we got booked by some kid emailed us, oh. and we were like, yeah, why why not? Like, yeah. we, we've got the money to just like lose money and go and play. It turns out this kid, Cardiff born and bred, in uni there. All his mates came. It was a massive party, and now we've got a fan base because of this independent venue that him and his mates worked at. That's why we played there. Yeah, they work behind the bar there. And we and stay with him when we go there. We stay with him and his girlfriend and his family. And now, like, they've closed that. So, you know, you, when we were playing so club, sad, it fell yeah. back this time because, thankfully, you know, we can go a bit into a bigger venue. But, like, where are bands going to start and, and build their fan base? So, you know, we're based in Brighton. You're not just gonna... We're very lucky in Brighton that there are a plethora of independent venues. But they keep getting chipped away at well there's not like going to the be horns, any left is I've there heard that, I've heard that the horns is moving and the casino next door to it is buying the space it's oh, in at the moment depressing. so it's just like yeah the horns says they're moving but you know for a business like the horn to close down to relocate somewhere it's a lot it's a Did massive you know, yeah, yeah, yeah massive like I walked past it chunk going there. back to stickies I walked past the other day and it just had the rest in noise written on yeah. the window oh. and it like ran a bit from the damp and yeah, I was like was oh this so, is horrible it was so picturesque I was just like oh, that ink is how I'm feeling right now <laughs> I walked past and was like I can't look I can't look I'm sad I've definitely yeah felt like I was running down the walls in <laughs> yeah. sticky mics though I say it's not even just for like playing shows I know this is like predominantly about music but like you know you go to a club night I went to sticky mics on my last birthday for an ABBA club night Oh, and it's so like, good it's sick like places it's like that you can go night, with your mates yeah. and it's not like do you want to go where the spoons which weather spoons do you want to go to? Like, not knock on weather spoons, of course, but it's like that is so depressing. It's better places yeah. to go. Yeah. Go to like a really nice independent venue that you trust and you want to give your money to. That's rather it. Than yeah, just like, go to a because you're voting yeah. when you pay something that you're voting for that kind of culture. Mm. That's the whole sure, thing. Yeah. That's the thing that I find so sad about the whole yeah. thing. You know. So let's talk about what you guys have coming up. Like we were talking about these the the United States premiere. Mm. What's what are we doing? Tell us, tell us. So we are playing a festival. So it's they're both festivals, but we're playing a festival in New York. It's called is it the New Colossus or just New Colossus? I don't know. It says some say New Colossus, some say the New Colossus. So I'm just like New Colossus. New Colossus, um, and it's a like inner city festival, much like like the Great Escape and stuff like that. Is. Mm, multi-venue, um, isn't it? yeah. So a multi-venue uh, festival, and we're playing three shows there which is going to be incredible. So our first ever show in New York is a DIY and big indie records showcase. That is fabulous. Which is going to be insane. And you've never been to the States before, I've have you? I've never been to America. Sam's been and Daniel's been. Me and Will have never, ever been. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a culture shock for me and Will. Yeah, it'd be amazing. It's going to be so overwhelming. New York is not going to be as shocking, though. Let's say that you were like, let's just go to Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was speaking to some American lady the other day and I I was talking about visas and she was like, I can't help but hear you're getting a visa for America to work. And I was like, yeah, we're going to play some shows. And I was like, playing in Texas. And she was like, oh, and I was like, Austin. And she was like, oh, Austin, you'll be fine. It's yeah. like Brighton. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Fine. My husband goes, my husband's English. He goes to America a lot for work. And they still will ask <laughs> yeah. him, still, have you, did you go to Megan and Harry's, like last year it was, did you go to Megan and Harry's wedding? And he's like, yeah. her? And like, I think when he started going, he was like 18, they would ask him, do you know the Beatles or do you know the Queen? I'm, I'm expecting yeah. to you get the Beatles. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you will. But they will think you two to speak the same. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah they, wow. pro- they probably will not be able to hear an, ac- like, an accent difference. Yeah, yeah we're going to New York and then going so, yeah. to... Three shows in New York, all the same festival, but three shows in New yeah. York, two on, two on the same day, but they're apparently they're like Hectic. a block away, which okay. means absolutely nothing to me. And then we do a little hop over internal flight to Austin, and we're playing 
Currently, we're playing two shows in South by. Do you know what the venues are? Uh, Mohawk. Mohawk and... And Latitude Bay. Okay. So we're doing our label and Polyvinyl's joint showcase of like their bands in Mohawk. And then we're playing the British Embassy, which hasn't been announced yet, but playing the British Embassy oh, that's great. showcase. Yeah. New single yeah. coming out? New single's coming out a week today. Okay. Then we're what, going what, do you know the date on that? So in 26th. 26th of February. Okay, yeah. excellent. Uh, and then... Is it just digital or is it a physical thing? So or? it's going to be a double. Have we, have a, we have announced this? I don't know. That's what I was Let's saying. Let's say it anyway. A, B yeah, side, it's gonna be vinyl, an a, a, B side vinyl, vinyl release, seven Ooh. inch. Just as like a kind of little, like, mm, little amuse bouche for the album. I like that. I like if that. If we do an yeah. album. <laughs> yeah. Just for what's to come. Because I feel like we've really, we've really changed in a way. I think we've just got better at what we do. Yeah, I think so. our, our songwriting has come on leaps and bounds if any past. you know if our, our label boss says it's come I know. on leaps and bounds we got a really start. lovely heartwarming email from our label boss being like I really like it and it's it's showing to people that you're Growth as you're growing as songwriters and I was like thanks Kev thanks that goes in like the save forever like folder on the, yeah. in the email <laughs> yeah. box like or, never delete yeah. that email ever where can someone buy this single so it'll be on the BSM mm. so Big Scare Monsters is our record label yeah, it'll be on their website, BSM I think their website is just, yeah, it's just BSM Rocks. Yeah, and obviously just stream the hell out of it on Spotify. Spotify. Just press play consistently. And, we're all, and we, we like when people like do a little story on Instagram. Oh, okay. Because like, Instagram's like kind of a big thing for us. Like we really, like really connect with people on there. Like We speak to Twitter. people a lot more on Instagram. Yeah, like people right. message us there and like I love seeing when people, because I do it to bands I like, like everything, everything. I'll be like walking to work in the morning and I'll be like everything, everything, I'm going to can Instagram you. I'm there. Remember me, please. <laughs> we'll, <give laughs> we'll do, we'll do a little message to them. Yeah. Or we can just do it directly to Jeremy if you want. <gasps> do it to them all. Do it to them all. Yeah, so is there any plans for touring in the UK this summer? Yeah, we literally come Festival. back from Austin. We're back for like 10 days and then we go on our debut UK headline tour. Oh, wow. So yeah, we go, yeah. let me see if I can remember the dates. Okay, so it starts on the 26th yeah. and it's oh yeah Nottingham. Manchester, Glasgow. I don't know. You're asking me. Oh, that'd be a long li- Glasgow to Bristol. That'd be a little. I think it's. Go are ahead, you in a van? See. Cardiff. Yeah. 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 Got it. Cardiff, Bristol, London, Birmingham. In some sort of order. I can't remember the yeah. order. But so London sold out. London sold out. Already. Oh, that is so good. So and where's where, where's that at? Yeah, the Camden Assembly. Ooh, nice. It used to be the bar. Used to be a bar flight. There you go. Oh, yeah. I know. But it's always been a thing because like seeing bands at Barfly in Liverpool and then Camden Barfly I think was always a big deal so like selling out what is Camden Barfly essentially it's the same size it's still the Barfly in your mind yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) you're not accepting this Camden assembly where can people find you on social media if they are not following you already we are at Orchards Live L-I-V-E L-I-V-E and that's on everything so like Facebook uh, Twitter it's our website Instagram it's our website everything's the same but find us on Instagram because that's we actually really like talk to people on Instagram. You answer people on Twitter. I don't understand yeah, Twitter. Twitter is just Confuses my me. realm, so it's just like is loads it? of gifs. That's how I just find I just Twitter just, just seems to have this plethora of gifs. That just, I wish I did. It would make life a lot easier. I don't, I don't understand, understand it. it. It's you just too, answer gifs. Too instant. I just yeah, send people gifs and it just seems to be right. so confusing. And then I'll go on there. Like I only check like once a month and there'll be all these messages I've missed yeah. and I feel I'm really sorry. bad. I'm like, I'm rude. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> yes. So guys, thank you so, so much for being here. It was really, really fun. Yeah, Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks nice for having us. And thanks guys for tuning in to the ITMI podcast. Please like us, follow us, subscribe, give us as many stars as you can, which hopefully it would be four or five and that's it talk to you later